the much-awaited budget speech 2023-2024 was delivered by Dr. The Honorable Minister Padayachi on Friday 2nd of June 2023. Prison Chambers is pleased to deliver this short video commentary alongside our usual newsletter. As a law firm, we focus on the main legal and tax measures announced in this year's budget. I don't know about daring, but there's certainly a bold attempt at raising the disposable income of the less privileged sections of society. So there are measures such as the increase in minimum wage, the increase in pension, the decrease in petrol prices, and the maintaining of the CSG allowance. All very welcome measures. Perhaps one of the most daring measures that were announced, however, was the complete revamp of the personal income tax system. So we're scrapping the flat 15% tax rate and replacing it with a completely progressive rate ranging from 0% to 20% and the removal of the solidarity levy. It's interesting to note that Mauritius actually had once upon a time a progressive tax rate until it was replaced with a flat tax rate in 2008 by the previous minister, Dr. Hamas Danen. The removal of the notorious solidarity levy will be seen as a very welcome measure to the financial services sector in particular, and will send a strong signal to society that Mauritius can be once again a very attractive IFC, and also a strong signal for investors who wish to invest in and through Mauritius. Also of note is the non-renewal of the tax incentive grade previously granted to banks for profits exceeding 1.5 billion rupees. So as from the year 2022-2023, these profits will now be taxed at 15%. It's not a retroactive measure per se, because the previous tax incentive rate was never actually renewed for this current year. So this measure will presumably be seen as an attempt to redistribute wealth and profits to the less privileged, particularly in an environment of rising inflation and interest rates. We also note the continued focus on renewable projects for our country in an effort to have a more sustainable economy and also a willingness and an effort to create a more diverse and inclusive society, particularly as regards the role of women and disabled people in the workplace. In relation to our IFC, there is only one change pertaining to the partial exemption on interest income this year. Every year, several representations are made to the Minister of Finance. However, the only change relating to the partial exemption on interest income this year relates to the increase of the partial exemption from 80% to 95% for closed-ended funds and collective investment schemes established in Mauritius. We have a note that the partial exemption on interest income derived from bonds used to finance renewable energy projects will now be extended to all sustainable energy projects. This appears to form part of the government of Mauritius' aim to make Mauritius a more green and sustainable economy island. The budget also introduces a series of waivers, such as the complete waiver of all outstanding debts of the COVID levy, together with interest and penalties, as at 20th of January 2023. This measure, together with the waiver of the solidarity levy, appears to show that the government of Mauritius recognizes that it has to evolve in a post-COVID reality. The reintroduction of the arrears payment scheme as well as a tax arrears settlement scheme for the full waiver of penalties and interest is a welcome measure. Following the popularity of these two measures last year, these two new reintroductions promise to settle disputes more easily. The budget appears to recognize the dispute resolution mechanisms to be streamlined in order to ensure coherence and fairness across the board. In particular, similarly to claims from the MRA, a taxpayer receiving a claim from the Registrar General now has 28 days to object. This also applies to the filing representations to the ARC and the customs and excise procedures have also been aligned with other fiscal laws. In the same vein, the budget also hints at a total review of the tax appeal system in a bid to improve its efficiency. It however remains to be seen what exactly these measures are and whether they'll truly be effective in practice. The budget addresses various other harmonization measures and exemptions. Interestingly, however, it does not refer to its commitments made last year regarding the global minimum tax for large multinationals. As of today, we're still unclear as to how the GMT and BEPS Pillar 2 will apply. We have observed a few noteworthy amendments brought to the Workers' Rights Act. A full-time worker will be allowed to complete a full working week within four working days. It will be interesting 
to see how this disposition will be in practice with regards to the employer's operating requirements. Another amendment brought to the Workers' Rights Act to clarify the power of a redundancy board to make orders in not only cases for unjustified termination, but also in cases of justified termination. Although this budget speech is not groundbreaking, there are nonetheless a few interesting measures. For starters, the Companies Act has been proposed to be amended in relation to the sending of annual reports and financial statements. Currently, it is mandatory to send annual reports and financial statements in hard copy to shareholders, unless they've decided otherwise. Since COVID-19, company secretaries have relentlessly requested that those documents be sent electronically. Finally, they have been heard. It is proposed now that annual reports and financial statements be sent electronically to shareholders, who nonetheless retain the right to request for hard copies. This is a welcome measure in this digital and sustainable era. In relation to the financial services industry, we have seen a slew of proposals in relation to strengthening the existing AML and safety framework. We have also noted the will of the government to impose a deeper duty of care on management companies in relation to the compliance of the clients. It has also been announced that existing licenses will be able to provide further activities and there will be the creation of new licenses. For existing licenses, funds will be able to invest in loans and similar instruments. This is more than welcome, as this has been long requested by the industry. Variable capital companies will now be allowed to provide the services of a family office, as well as wealth management. Finally, in terms of new licenses, it is proposed to create an electronic money institution license, as well as a license under private banking for wealth management and family office. So there you have it, our brief insights on this year's budget. If you've enjoyed this video, do read our newsletter which will contain more detailed commentary on the tax and legal measures. Thank you for watching.